Welcome to the Viz Art Podcast, the business of art. This is episode one. We are going to be talking about business, art, and everything in between. I'm excited to be doing this. I've been wanting to do this for a couple years now, and now it's finally time to give back, show people what we're doing, um, answer any of those questions that you've been you know, curious about as far as you know, the art and the business side of things, or even just an entrepreneur wanting to try to uh, start your own business uh, in that. Today, we are going to talk to uh, a guy named Manny Rendon from Dialogue Designs. He's going to be our first artist we have on the podcast. We're going to be bringing someone on new every single uh, month or when we have one of these. And he is one of the guys I want to bring right off the bat. Not only have I been working with him for over a year now uh, with some collaborations, we are we have a, a surprise today that we're going to be unveiling for the first time. Let's let's bring Manny in. This is uh, Manny. Manny, welcome to the show. Welcome to the podcast. I, Thank uh, you very much. Of, Thank you. Of course. So you create handcrafted surfboards made in Oceanside, California, in the heart of the surf industry. You have been doing these for a while, and... I don't think a lot of people realize how much goes into actually handcrafting these boards. I mean, some people look at a board, honestly, kind of like myself and almost thinking machines are creating this. Well, no, there's a lot more to that. And that's kind of how we got to know each other was doing collaborations. I've done a lot of work with different action sports companies, and this was kind of one of the missing links. And so when you approached me, I was like, man, this is this. This sounds too good to be true. So there's there is a. Uh, a whole craft and art side to it. And I, I would love for you to talk a little bit about that and kind of how you got into this industry. Well, in uh, 2006, I uh, started out at uh, Oceanside Surf, Surf Industries uh, in the packaging department for uh, Donald Takayama and basically just worked my way up uh, from the bottom there. And uh, one one day, uh, one of the sand- well, let's back up real quick. Donald Takayama. I mean, we're talking about the legend, the Godfather. I mean, for the people who don't know who the, who who Donald is, is who is Donald to you? I mean, who? I mean, as a surfer and as a uh, as a as a board shaper. I mean, that's a name we can't just go right past. Correct. Yeah, Donald Takayama is uh, basically uh, iconic in the surfboard world. You know, he started at a very young age uh, building surfboards in Hawaii and then making his way out to California. So for his name to be brought up and to be mentored and to be surrounded by uh, Donald Takayama was a blessing for me uh, just to just fall right into it and start at the bottom and see what was being created and crafted there at uh, Oceanside Surf Industries. So it was a great way to be started uh, in this uh, the surfboard world. And before surfing, have you surfed your whole life? I mean, is this something you've... You no, know? no. I basically come from a, a, a snowboard background, skateboard. Okay. And uh, obviously that's another part of my passion that goes into dialogue surfboards. But that's how it all started. I uh, followed my sweetheart down here from Tahoe and... Uh, she grew up surfing for uh, Lyndon and Donald Takayama, and she got me into the industry. And uh, that's the rest is history. I started a dialogue uh, about six years ago. Wow. So what is what does dialogue uh, mean and represent to you? I mean, what when you t- when you say that name, what is what does that bring into the table? Dialogue basically where it all came about was basically uh, the. Uh, having this moment in time when you're out surfing or snowboarding or being out exercising and coming out and talking with people about how you feel, the emotion that it gives you, the wellness of it all. And that's what I'm trying to do is create wellness with my boards and a healthy lifestyle living for people. Well, you create incredible boards. I'll give you that. I mean, your boards are are top of the line. You know, you obviously being able to see and learn from Donald, uh, you know, it shows. And I would love to kind of get into some of the designs of the board. So, so far, we have created three boards together. Um, How did you find out about my work and what made you, you know, come and approach me uh, for these collaborations? 
Well, how I found out about Viz is uh, basically I would stop by and pop into your gallery and I would look around and start looking at everything. And what I realized is there was so much different influences of uh, MC Asher, just all kinds of great art that was happening. Basically, there was worlds inside of worlds of each piece of his art. So before you know it, I the light turned on upstairs, basically. And I said to myself, I've got to find a way to work with this guy and showcase these Appreciate handcrafted that. pieces. <laughs> so I, I, I kept on coming in for about a year and uh, talking with Viz and saying, hey, we got to do these boards. We got to do, do these boards. And the time timing was never right. So one day I get the phone call and Viz says, OK, I'm ready. So we, I came in and the first board we did was uh, Lonely World. Yeah. And uh, it was a great showcasing piece uh, about your history as well, about locking your room, locking yourself yeah. in the room for going three through, months. Going through those tough times. And, and uh, I think the rest is history from there. We started showcasing these hand-shaped boards that uh, are just – off the charts. Yeah, they're they're beautiful. So let's we don't we only have uh, two of the ones that we have, and then we have our new one that we're going to be unveiling. Yes, sir. But our second one that we did was the rendition of the Great Wave off Kanagawa. So it's called Off California. Everything in the wave is for Hokusai in Japan. Everything in the sun is for California. Both sides of the Pacific. Both artists. So this one, I I definitely has a lot of meaning this was when i wanted to get on a surfboard right away but it looks like tell me about the board design so it's it's different than most boards I, i've seen i'm not a surfer myself so yeah. um you know tell me about how you picked this design and what what the design is so what i did is basically stuck to the say the standard footprint of uh, a fish which is uh, an original template that i've uh, picked up uh, years ago and what it is, it's just a really simple, fast outline on the bottom with uh, some fins that are created from uh, the Oceanside Pier. Now, how'd you get those? These fins are too cool. You have to check out these fins. These are they're wood fins. They come from the old Oceanside Pier. I think that is just so cool how you're able to shape that. How'd you get to some of that wood? Well, what I did was uh, I have some friends that uh, are in the business uh, in Oceanside, and uh, they work for the city. And uh, they called me up one day and said, hey, we're about to throw this stuff out. And uh, do you have any use for it? And as we were working together, uh, it was almost like a wine pairing. I already had in my head what I was going to create for this next board to showcase this. And uh, so what I did is I, I milled the uh, wood and, uh, and then created these fins and then glassed them. And it's just turned out to be a slam dunk. Yeah, there it's 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 beautiful. I, I love this board. Different colors, the the fins, how you hand shape that. I mean, this board, it's it's definitely uh, an incredible board for the second board you did. And then we move on to the next board, which is Reflect in San Diego. This one's uh, it doesn't have the twin fins. It has everything hidden inside of it about San Diego. Uh, so what was what was the reasoning that we chose this artwork to be put on that board? Well, the reasoning is what this model here is called the Matador. And what it is, it's a, a, a single to a twin fin type board with a bonzer bottom. And what that does, it, it kind of creates a little more speed in the tube, which is a barrel for most people that don't understand sure. what that is. That would be me. I <laughs> yeah, in a way that's naturally meant to pretty much, once you drop in, you go straight and you're getting covered from the water. Oh, nice. And uh, it's got a hard, hard outline rails. And uh, I think what we decided is uh, we kept it, we matted it all out black to give it this faster race look. And then you're showcasing uh, San Diego which is uh, the city that we all love sure. and, and paying homage to it. Um, on our next board, this is our board that we have. This is the first time it's going to be unveiled. 
this one hits home because this is a Carlsbad. This is where my shop's at. This is where I've been here for almost seven years coming up on. I I definitely wanted to put one here in the shop that is, you know, bringing the locals and bringing in kind of what I've been creating here uh, in the village downtown area. Before I get to that, let's talk a little bit about the process. Because, I mean, for me too, I have no idea how these boards get made. I mean, I don't know if they're made. A lot of people, kind of like myself, before I met you and actually talked to some shapers, I mean, it's almost like they are put in a machine and pop, here comes this beautiful board. But that's not the case at all. I mean, because these are styrofoam, right? Or yeah, poly polystyrene. Polystyrene. So yes. you get this block, essentially, of this polystyrene. And and then you work your magic. You have your template and you're hand shaping, you're hand carving. I mean, you know every single inch of that board, right. kind of like the wax on, wax off type of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a pretty intimate moment that you have with your, your planer, your measure, measuring tools and all of that. And how the whole process works is either you order your blanks direct from – various companies there's three main companies and what they do they have a catalog of measurements that are already set into these molds for these boards that come out okay so that's that's process number one you purchase the blank you bring it back to your studio and then you map it out which is mapping out the outline if and they, so all the blanks have this wood piece right in the middle. Yeah. So they all come with that. They Yeah. What that does, it creates uh, the tinsel strength to hold it together, so to speak, and okay. the flexibility. It's like the backbone of the board. Correct. Correct. And it comes in, you know, bass and oak and, and, and walnut. It comes in various woods, uh, various uh, uh, strengths, obviously what I was just saying. Sure. But what you do is once you've hit that process is you have various templates that you've created over time. And then you lay the template down on top of the stringer, measure that out, outline it. Then you cut it either with a, 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 band, a jigsaw or a, a skill saw, whatever your preference is, a regular hand saw, people do it that way. I've seen it cut, you know, various ways. I personally do it with a jigsaw. I think it's a little bit easier for me. And I found that it works pretty well. Then from there, what it is, is you scale it. And people do it uh, by a foot. You So from the nose up is a foot. You find the dead center of the board. And then you from the tail up is another foot. Or you can keep measuring in increments of 12 depending on how anal you really are. Sure. Which is a good thing. Yeah, because you will get you need the both sides to be the same. Absolutely. And I mean, obviously, there's no way in cutting it and just flipping it over. I mean, you have to get these as close as you can get to. So that's the whole point of measuring it is making sure they're they're aligned. Correct. It's, it's right brain, left brain. And that's really the process with hand shaping boards is that your strong side usually comes out pretty darn a lot closer than the left. So what you're trying to emulate is your whole right side. So and they're pretty darn close. Huh. And so you're doing this when you're cutting this. I mean, obviously you're wearing the full gear. You're in a white suit. We can, because I can only imagine cutting this stuff up. And I mean, that can be not good for the, the body. So you're in like a room by yourself, just kind of getting at it and in protective gear with this, right? You can't Absolutely. just, you can't just do this in your garage. No, I, I think that, uh, you know, you want to you want to stay as green as you possibly ga can. You want to wear goggles, uh, ear protection, mask, cover your skin up as much as you can. Because all that foam can a just... Absolutely. It can, just it can be itchy. People ha get rashes and you just want to stay as protected as you possibly can. It's The surfboard industry is one of the uh, messiest and dirtiest jobs in the world. So <laughs> would have never guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> would have never guessed that. I thought you're out in the ocean being clean and <laughs> yeah, it, 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 but actually making them. I mean, that's a whole different process. It really is. It it can be a very toxic environment. But what you try to do is eliminate and uh, keep that down to a minimum. Huh. Well, I think. Uh, 
I think it's incredible on on how you can uh, hand shape this. My brain doesn't work like that as far as shaping, carving, you know, people who do wood carvings and sculpting. I mean, I my brain doesn't work like that. So a whole different process side of it. And then once you shape that board, then you get a glass it. So like when you brought this board, we're going to be showing today. So you brought it in, we signed it on the back and then you took the board back and then you were able to do some uh, paint, you know, some touch up and then you glossed and you glass the whole, the whole thing. Yes, sir. The way that process works is so once the raw foam is shaped, yeah, then you take it to the glassing process, which it's, you know, the glassing process comes in different various uh, gauges of cloth. Okay. Two ounce, four ounce, six ounce, eight ounce, Volan. It's a, it's a huge process. And the, and the best. And that's how we got our art on there. So that's when I, sh I sent it to the, those people. Is it, it's like rice paper almost. Correct. This is well. What this is is basically it's a it's a two ounce cloth. Okay. And what they do, they print, they sublimate it into the cloth. Uh, okay. So once they sublimate the art into the cloth, then it comes to me, and this process here is what it's called a, a an inlay. So we inlay the fabric into the board. And it's all masked off and taped the way Viz and Manuel wants it, Manny. And, and we cut it after it's kicked. And what that means is after the process is hardened, you come back and you cut the cloth out. Then from that process, we take it to paint, which is, you know, you, there's various airbrush artists out there that airbrush the boards. Once that process is done there, I bring it back to the studio and then we put its blanket on it, which is the cloth. And we and naturally, most boards are being built from the bottom up and then we do the deck last, unless it's some special reverse inlay. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, because a lot of people think that I'm actually drawing or creating right on this board. So I'm working, we're using a, a lot of my existing uh, designs here. That was kind of the only way we could have done this because not doing it right on the board would have been difficult. And even painting on a board can get difficult too, depending on the inks that you use. Because I know that has been an issue. We've talked a little bit about that is I can't just take a, this foam board you know draw on that board and they right. give it to you because when you're doing that glassing there's going to be some of those reactions right is it that the one right. of the biggest it really is it's one of the biggest factors with when you're building a board is there's always that question in the back of your head is is the paint going to bleed did the airbrush artist put too much water in his paint and is it is it completely clean so when you get it down to uh, the bare bones and the bare minimum it's basically it's kind of like a white glove affair when you're building boards at this level everything's basically got to be super sanitary like a doctor sure it's got to be clean your racks have to be clean you're setting down little foam uh, stickers so the the tape doesn't transfer into the board pulling paint once you're pouring it oh on yeah there and it, it's a you huge get one, process you get one shot at that right oh big time <laughs> you know you, yeah how it, long how long does it take for the gl the glass or you know how long does that take to actually draw dry and be able to use it at once you've laid that out what so once you've done the the whole journey of the board each thing is done in a stage obviously from the inlay sure. to the glassing and all of that and and basically it dries within about 20 uh 24 hours to about 48 okay but it takes about a month for all the gases to release from the board huh. which it fully hardens then got you that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, we've been working together for over a year and actually we're just about to release only our fourth board. I mean, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, they take time. These aren't anything that we're pumping out. These oh, aren't no. mass produced. I mean, these boards literally are hand shaped, have the best care to them. Um, and yeah, we are going to unveil the village by the sea right now. I think it's time. I'm excited to see this. I haven't seen the front of this. I want to see what this is about. So let me just give this a spin here. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. The pin. That pinstriping, the village by the sea. So, yeah, we... 
That Nailed turned it. out. That turned out great. I'll, I'll tell you that much. I mean, you you hit with the the gloss. You got is that matted? Did you do matted? Yeah, we did a matte finish with this. Okay, and, and so we got the matte finish with the gloss with the smokestack in the background. The store in history, Carl's bed in there. Man, those colors pop. They pop great. They pop and and so yeah, take us through this board. I mean, this is my first time, so let me just sit back and soak this in because this is uh this is a beautiful board, especially if you're a local San Diego or Carlsbad person. I mean, I'll let you take it from there. Oh, this is a uh, this is my uh, transporter model, which is basically it's a more of a little bit of a funner shaped board, you know, from uh, a professional rider to a beginner. It's just going to be more user friendly. Okay. The bottom of the board has a a, a concave in the nose with a, a V out the back. And the way I ran the fin system is uh, uh, it's a five fin cluster. And what it is, is uh, I ran a small box, which is an eight inch box. So you could run it as a, a small little single fin, which is a seven inch fin, or you could ride it as a quad. Oh, wow. So a lot of different ways to ride this board. Correct. And is that what also makes it more of a beginner board too? Or is it more the style and the, I mean, because obviously I think those, like the other, this, this, the second board we did, I mean, those fins are in there. I mean, you can't actually take those fins out. So this one, you have so many different options to be able to move those around. Correct. Yes. From uh, the Atlas to the Matador, you're looking at, you know, a twin fin that is glassed in and a single fin that is a glass on fin. And with the transporter, we kept it, uh, the options open for uh, the beginners and the expert riders. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's a more of a relaxed rock on the board so it gives gives it more of a, a more of an easier paddling performance type board uh, it is it is beautiful that that pinstripe of the purple i mean just brings it all in i didn't see any of that before i mean that obviously wasn't there when you brought in last time and and just how much that glassing really uh, helps is in, incredible. So between these three boards that we currently have here, we don't we we don't have the first one here unfortunately anymore. But would you say that this the San Diego board this is kind of like the more expert board, and then this would be more the beginner, or is it the uh, the matador? I would say I would say what you're looking at is basically they're all user friendly boards okay and how that all works is basically it boils down to sizing and rider type and what they're looking for in a performance type board Uh, each board is going to work differently in different ways but when you're building a board what you're tuning into is uh the width uh the uh the thickness of the board so to answer your question, they're they're all great boards from beginner to okay, because they're all obviously like different shapes and sizes. Like this one's got that the point. This has got the twin fin. This is has has all the way around. So for me, I I wouldn't know which. I mean, this just looks fast. This board just looks quick and fast. The twin fin, um, not sure. I know it just looks badass. It, it's a cool looking board with how that is, and this mo- almost looks like a paddle board somewhat. Absolutely. And so it kind of seems like more just kind of mellow and, and I think you would be right on that. And and the reason for that it's just it's more a fun shape naturally. When I say fun shape, yeah. it's it's a fun shape that that anybody can use the board. Out of the three, yeah, that would be the one that when I tune into the young client that comes in, he, he wants to get into surfing, is it I'm gonna make it easy on that client. And I'm going to start him out on a fun shaped board that's basically a mini long board that what it gives him is it gives him a platform, gives him a platform that he can build up those fundamentals of confidence, of learning how to paddle, how to stand up. And with a a, a more of a natural rocker, it's going to be easier for him to get up in that sort of speak football hit position. Nice. Yeah. That's a... Well, well done as usual. I mean, I I couldn't uh, ask for anything more beautiful. And uh, these are again a hundred percent rideable board. So a lot of people don't realize also is that these boards are 
functional. These are functional boards because there's a lot of boards. I've been approached by a couple different surfboard um, people who are making them, but they're only for display purposes. And I think having it functional, having it made locally here in San Diego, you know, especially with the history with you coming, you know, working for Donald. I mean, you know, he is considered the world's first professional surfer he had a the place in Encinitas and then Oceanside I mean and it comes full circle back around to you you know creating this I mean that's what excites me and uh what I love about these collaborations with uh artists and especially yourself I mean you know got to give you props for for what you're doing I appreciate it thank Uh, you very much these are these are beautiful. You could definitely check these out on our YouTube channel um, to see the boards in person and, you know, just how they how they look. So I guess the uh, the question that I have to ask is, can you tell the difference between a hand shaped board? And obviously, I mean, do they make them by machine where it's almost kind of like cookie cutter stamped? Um, you know, I mean, yeah, yes. Yes and no. Now. What happens now is basically with the the introduction of uh, CNC machines, it's uh, made the process a lot faster for a lot of the shapers out there, which it's uh, it's a great process. You know, it's uh, some people take the longer road, so to speak, is they're uh, the soul and uh, artisan of handcrafting a true vessel for the ocean. It's it comes that would a, be that would be Manny. That, that, <laughs> com- that comes a little more with the soul of creating this one of a kind original piece. And I think that there's a lot to be said for that. There's a lot of soul in these boards that are created that way. These pop-outs, it's great. And when you start to become big in, in the business and time is of the essence, that's when people pop in and they start to to use these machines. Is it, is it good or bad? I, I don't really know. I don't really kind of focus on that. I focus on what we've what we've created and really sticking to Viz's template, which is original art pieces that are truly handcrafted. Completely, and uh, you are a soulful man, Manny. I mean, you 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 are deep, man. Thank I tell you. you that much. It comes from the comes from the heart. I, I that you know that's what I loved about you know when I met you is you are passionate about what you do. I mean, you know, we share a lot of those traits as far as you know sticking with you know handmade and you know how much time we put into to our craft i mean that that people can see it when they you oh know, yeah when they see the finished product i mean it, it's it's day and night so you know i think that's 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 great so in business manny what what uh what scares you as an artist or a businessman i mean what what is something that you struggle with on a day-to-day basis as a professional shaper, as a surfer, as, you know, a family guy? I mean, I think that, uh, one of the biggest fears of t- at times is what happens is, uh, your inspiration when you walk in and sometimes you kind of sort of speak, you hit like a flat spot and you're searching to be creative that's a, a somewhat of a little bit of a fear factor. You know, other things is, is you know, where's it all going? What You want to be a maitre d' for artisans and you always want to do the right thing in creating these one-of-a-kind pieces. And the fear is that as creators and artists is that people are losing a little bit of that soulfulness in what they're doing. They're starting to more or less pop all these things out and it's it's not really coming from the genuineness of who they truly are. Sure. Sure, yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, you know, there's the whole, you know, business side of it. Well, you know, we need to burn and turn. That's what a lot of people think. And then right. there's also the side of, well, I want to take the time, but you know, how can you justify the cost of it? So there's a lot that go into it, but you know, I mean, fear is the biggest reason why people fail. I mean, I think a lot of people know that. So, yeah. you know, overcoming some of those, those fears, I mean, what is it that, you know, what keeps you going? What keeps you, you know, I mean, cause there is, you know, those people who do the burn and turning, but they're, you're not worried about them. You're, you're worried about Manny. You're worried about creating your, your art. So, you know, I mean, what keeps you moving? What keeps you moving forward? What What is it that 
I think that the one of the main things that keeps me moving is basically through health and fitness, working out, being outside, and basically having a vision that what dialogue is, is, is having that vision that when it's all said and done, that you made a difference. You made a difference in the little five-year-old that he picked up your board and he went to the ocean and he surfed and it created this moment, a moment in time that it's giving back wellness that later on in life, he's always going to have that. And that's what's going to keep him driving through any obstacle in life. Yeah. How often do you, are you surfing? Are you surfing every day? Or? I'm surfing about twice to three times a week. Okay. That's tough, obviously, running a business right, and trying. everything else. I mean, you know, as much as you want to, you know, be out there every single day. I mean, you know, the busier you get, the, the less, uh, unfortunately, you probably get to do that fitness or go out there and you know, Absolutely. or carve a couple of those ways. <laughs> exactly. That's it. <laughs> yes. Um, what, what advice would you give someone who wants to be an artist or who wants to, uh, you know, be, you know, start a business? I mean, what advice would you give someone who, you know, looks and sees what you're doing and is like, Hey, how can I get there? How can I take, you know, how, can, you know, what does it take? What, what, what I, takes I, to be dialogue designs? I think basically what it takes is basically, you know, getting up each morning and believing in yourself. That's number one. Number two is basically write your thoughts down, come up with a business plan and try to execute that business plan. You know, set up a, a 30 day goals, 90 day goals and look at those goals and try to execute them. Don't be so hard on yourself when an outline doesn't come out the way you want it to. The next one's going to be better, and then the next one's going to be better, and then it just keeps growing from there. Sure. You have to uh, understand that uh, none of us are perfect, but in a, in a world of creations, it's perfect to the people that come in and see your work, and they're blown away. they it, they're in a fantasy world and you create some sort of escapism for them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very true. I mean, you got to write your thoughts down. I mean, that's, I think, you know, something a lot of people don't do or it's easier now with phones, but I mean, even when you have a dream about something, just write those, those, those words down. Cause it's easy for those just to kind of go away and you got to fail to succeed. I mean, I, I think people don't understand that they want to get it done the right way the first time and it never works out like that I absolutely mean, you, you got to get over that you have to keep moving you can't be scared to fall down you lick your wounds and you get back up and you keep moving I mean, and that's where i think a lot of people get lost is they think like hey i'm gonna keep getting stuck in this failing well i mean it's that's just part of the process. I mean, that is the process to be successful and to get to where you have. I mean, these just didn't pop up and they don't look the way they do because, you know, you've been doing this since day one. I mean, like, I could, oh, yeah. I mean, and you're still always growing. I mean, Absolutely. That's, that's the thing is you're always growing. You're always, I mean, I try to take risks every day, calculated risks. I'm not taking wild risks, you know, anymore, but you've got to take some of those risks and you got to expand. You got to, develop you got to keep working towards like you said those goals make those goals you know and you know write them down i think that's a lot of people don't write things down anymore it's oh, yeah. so important having it on paper where you can see it every single day and it's just going to keep your you know keep you looking at it and focused absolutely it's it's the goals are tangible they're on your coffee table they're in your office but those goals keep you moving because, you know, each day you're, you're getting up and when you're inspired to do these things and you see these goals and you hit these targets, it's like, yeah, yeah. you're pumped. That's a good feeling. It really is, you know, and, and when you surround yourself with great people as well. Completely. Your, your friends make you who you are, sort of speak. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, you got to get out of, I mean, that's what helped me get to where I'm at is I yeah, I had to burn a lot of bridges. Of course. Uh, yeah, I had to burn some bridges. I had to move past some of my demons. Sure. I had to cut out the bullshit. Hey, I mean, that's what it is. You've got to cut out the bullshit to be able to focus on the main goal because those will pull at you so oh, quick and yeah. bring you down so quick. You could be working your whole life for something and all of a sudden it could just take one little thing that actually 
takes it all away. Um, and that's why you got to stay focused on it. I mean, that's, that's where I'm at is I'm continuing trying to, um, you know, just move and not try to go back to my old ways and, you know, those old demons and, Correct. um, and surround myself with people that I enjoy people that have the good energy. You want that. I mean, that's absolutely, you know, if, if you're surrounding yourself with all those negative people or the people who are haters and all that, right. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's a very toxic completely, environment. So completely. you have to realize that you, when you truly start to figure out who you are and what you love to do, stick with what you love to do. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it'll show. Yep. And the right people fall into your lap and they come and they approach you and they follow you. Dialogue is a family. It becomes a family of boards that are creating wellness in the water for people. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's very true, and you know, you you have a great look on life, and uh, you know, I mean, you know, your boards speak volumes for you know the type of person you are, and you know how much your business means to you, and that's why I have a lot of respect for what you got going on. Is you're not scared to take those risks, you're not scared to get out there, you're not, you know scared to, to talk to other shapers and, you know, bounce ideas around. I know, you know, you, ha you just, you're a, you're an asset to this community. And I'm so lucky to have you here in Oceanside, you know, right around the corner and, you know, in the industry of, uh, you know, of where surfing almost kind of not started, but where the, the boards and the action sports is, industry is, is you are in the middle of it. Right. It's basically you're in one of the main pinnacles of surfing is uh, here in Oceanside. So, you know, likewise, I mean, I'm super lucky. I'm blessed to be working with Viz Art here and showcasing, uh, you know, the Atlas, the Matador and the Transporter. These are uh, great boards and, on top of all that, uh, the art is just unbelievable and it transports you into another world if you look at it long enough. Well, thank you, Manny. Uh, you know, this is the business. This is awesome. I love it. Um, you know, I, I'm excited to have you back on, you know, later on because we will be doing some more collaborations down the road. We'll be releasing the boards here on the podcast uh, so people can tune in. But stay in touch. Come by the shop. Manny, did you uh, have a website you wanted to let people see some of your uh, boards on? Yeah, please just go to dialoguedesigns.com. Awesome. There it is. Thank you so much, you guys. Till next time, stay in touch, keep working, and uh, we'll see you later. The Viz Art, Business of Art. Talk to you later.